I'll start us off with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this wonderful day that you've blessed us with where we can gather together as a family and to, to study your word. We're so thankful for the ability to worship you and the, the, the beauty that comes from being able to sing praises to you and to, to gather together and, and to remember Jesus today. We ask that you help us to be able to, to have a better understanding of, of your word, that we seek truth continually, and that we don't let anything pass by that's anything short of your truth. We're so thankful for everything that we have, and we ask that you be with us as we go throughout this week. Help us to, to glorify you in everything that we do, and to, to strive to be better Christians every day, and to grow. We're so thankful for everything that we have, and most of all, we thank you for your son Jesus, and it's through him we offer this prayer. Amen. Well, good morning. It's so great to be here this morning. Welcome to the adult auditorium class. Uh, this month, uh, Jamie Reynolds and I are going to be talking about the summer of life. And so it's a continuation of what we've been talking about um, starting last month, where uh, George and Caleb and, and Ethan Acuff gave a great class talking about the spring of life. And so we're moving forward to, a, the, I guess, the next stage of life here. The summer of life. And so today's class is going to be kind of an introduction of, of the summer of life and where we're going this month as we talk about what the summer of life is. And so today's class, we really want to focus on why does this matter? You know, it's, it, it can be easy to think about, well, why, why does it matter what season of life I'm in? It, you know, it really doesn't matter. But, but it does, because there's so many different struggles and so many different um, strengths that we have in each stage of life, and so it's important to be able to identify those and to talk about those. So if you remember, our overall class topic for this entire year um, is redeeming the time. And so back in January, we had classes taught by Philip and Keith um, talking about the rede redeeming our time with um, specific groups of people. Um, whether that's our family, our church family, whether that's non-believers or whoever that is, redeeming the time. We also had a great class taught by Zach and Eddie talking about the parting words of the wise and looking at great figures that we have in Scripture and looking at their lives and things that they did, but focusing on their, their final words. And we talked about how it's important to, to see people's final words because you talk about what the most important thing is to you. When, whenever you're giving those final words. So redeeming the time is, is a scripture-based concept, and, and there's so many things that the world will tell us, you know, how we measure how well we're spending our time, and what, you know, looking at how much money you have, or how much success you have in your job, or having this amount of kids, or doing um, this thing with your life, or whatever that is. But it's so important to understand that we're talking about redeeming the time from a scripture-based standpoint. So redeeming the time is, is so important for us as Christians to, to do the best that we can with the time that God has given us to be as productive as we can in, in His kingdom and to use those gifts and those talents and those tools that we have in order to please Him. So if you will turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 will be starting in verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, starting in verse 1, says, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. And a time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. 
And so this passage is really where the whole thought process behind this this analogy of the the seasons of life comes from. Here in my Bible, I have a a, uh, subtitle. It says, A Time for Everything. And so, thinking about this passage and and how that fits in with with our theme this year of redeeming the time and and looking at those seasons of life, I want to ask, why, why is it important? Why, why is this passage important? What does this tell us about redeeming our time as Christians? If anybody has any, any thoughts, um, if you want to raise your hand or just call it out either way, I'll try to, I know we've got our, um, our stream going, and so I'll try to uh, say back any comments that are said so the people um, visiting from, from the online, the interwebs can, can hear that too. So what does this passage tell us about redeeming our time? Yes, ma'am. Right. What what she's saying is there's our our time is so short and it's so important that we understand what that time is. Any other thoughts? We have very little time here on earth, and so it's very important of how we use that time, especially as Christians, for sure. So I I thought it was interesting how each one of these phrases, uh, each one of these verses talks about things that that are really two polar opposites of each other. Birth and death, love and hate, war and peace, seeking and finding, and, and these others as well. So I want you to think about a time in your life, um, we'll call this situation A, um, when things are going really good and, and your joy is abundant and, and joy comes easy to you, your stress is low, and you, you probably are already thinking of a situation like that. And these are the more enjoyable situations for sure. And situation B is when something is happening that maybe you don't understand. And things, things are really, truly tough. It's, it's not just we, we tell people that things are tough, but they're, they're truly weighing down on us. We're feeling lost and alone. And, and maybe you still, you still have joy because we have an understanding where our joy comes from as Christians. But it's very hard to come by. And we know these situations as well. And that's why I believe that Ecclesiastes chapter 3 is so important in understanding in our Christian walk. Because as Christians, whenever we're making that transition from, from the good, the, the situation A, and it feels like things start falling apart in our lives, and we start moving into situation B over here on the other side, it's, it's going to be hard. And, and whether we like it or not, we're going to feel pain. But that's when we have to rely on our fellow brethren in order to help us keep our focus so that we can remain focused on glorifying God no matter what situation that we're in. And we have to have an understanding that just because we're in a hard situation in our lives doesn't mean that we're given a free pass to to not be productive in the kingdom. And we we can take vacation days from work and and recharge and and refill. But there's no such thing as a vacation day from being a Christian. And so moving forward, I want to, to begin our discussion on the actual seasons of life. And so, obviously, these seasons of life that we're talking about, these are not, you know, set in stone. It, um, you know, the, the ones that were kind of planning uh, the class for this uh, semester, this is kind of what they'd come up with. And so you're not going to find a scripture that says, now the summer of life begins at age 30, and the fall of life begins at age 50, and this is what's going to happen directly 
as soon as you start this stage of life, your life is going to change and um, all these things are going to happen. The, the, the seasons of life that we're talking about are just general ideas that fit together in this analogy. And so it's very important to understand that every season of life, which, which may look completely different for some people, my, my spring of life may have been a polar opposite of your spring of life. But that we have to remember that each one of us plays a crucial part in the kingdom of God, no matter what season of life that we're in. So just to break this down and, and uh, so that we're on the same page of, of what we're talking about with the seasons of life, um, here is kind of what um, the thought process bef- behind these seasons were. So starting off in the spring of life, this is um, the class that we had uh, last month. Um, so spring ages 15 to 29 around there, um, we see uh, lots of potential, um, the, the ability to, to do great things as you're learning. We see lots of energy. There's, there's a, it's very likely that in this season of life, you're going to have the most energy that you'll ever have for the rest of your life. We see the ability for lots of growth, which there's definitely the ability to grow in every season of life. We see uh, fresh or new beginnings. Maybe it's you're moving off to college and starting college, or maybe you're starting your first job, or there's lots of, of firsts in this stage of life. We see lots of excitement and optimism. And, and so moving forward to the summer of life, things are starting to heat up a little bit. That's how that analogy plays in. Summer being hot, things are starting to heat up, and you're, you're having lots of activity and you're starting to feel that pressure and starting to, to stretch yourself a little bit thin. You're starting to feel the heat of all the responsibilities, especially if you're starting a family. And you start kind of figuring out a lot of things and starting to deepen your roots um, in, in whatever that is that you're deepening your roots in. And hopefully as Christians, that's deepening our roots in Christ. We start seeing more um, a concept of being more self-sufficient and not relying on others quite as much. You know, finally getting maybe your own job and and a good job at that. There's a possibility for lots of overcommitment and and saying yes just to to everything. Maybe you're starting a family and feeling the pressure from that. So that's, that's the summer of life. So moving forward to the fall of life, we start seeing the ability to have a lot of influence in, in other people's lives or maybe the decisions of the business that you're working at. We see that maybe you're um, obtaining the, the max amount of resources that you'll ever have in your life. You've been kind of saving up for retirement. As I, I didn't mention this, but fall is kind of, we're saying fall is age 50 to, to retirement. And so maybe things are starting to slow down as you look for retirement or you retire. You start thinking about the reputation that you've set for all of these years. You start to build true wisdom. And you have the ability to to mentor, especially the younger generations. And you start beginning to, to reap what you've sown for these years. So moving forward, the winter of life, which is being called retirement and on, you see the ability to have a lot of investment, whether that's investing time or whether that's investing resources, maybe for younger generations, providing for them. You see a lot of humility in people that are in these seasons of life. But you see a lot of more dependence on the younger generations, whether that's for physical needs or other things like that. But you, you're also seeing a lot more availability and more time that you're able to spend with maybe loved ones or um, others that, that are needing help. You start thinking about the legacy that you're leaving. You start thinking about the wisdom that you can share with others. And you start preparing for eternity and making sure that those loved ones around you know what the truth is. And so it's important to remember that each of these stages of life 
is a beautiful thing. And the, the key is, is how can we work together with, through all of these stages of life? And if you notice, there's, there's a lot of overlapping in these. There are very different things. You know, each stage of life is going to have a different strength. Each stage of life is going to have a different challenge. But that's, that's what's so beautiful is that we can work together to encourage and to build one another up regardless of what stage of life or season of life that we're in. So I just want to get a, a quick idea to see kind of the mix of uh, seasons of life that we have in here. And so if you don't want to raise your hand for this, don't, don't feel like you have to. Um, but if you're willing, raise your hand if you're uh, in the spring of life. That's kind of where I feel like I am is the, the spring of life. So we got a few. All right. Hey, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> so moving forward, the summer of life. Raise your hand if you feel like that's kind of where you're at. Okay, so probably about, about the same amount. The fall of life. Oh, they were kind of split pretty evenly here. And the winter of life. Wow. I really didn't think that it was going to be this even, but I didn't count specifically, but it's, it's pretty close. So really a, a great mixture of all the seasons here in class this morning. And so this, this is kind of how I thought it would be. I, I was hoping there would be a good mix. And so this is just such a neat thing to be able to, to sit here together and to be able to, to have a discussion about this. There's so much wisdom that can be, can be shared through um, these different seasons. And, you know, maybe, maybe one of you has gone through something that I'm going through in my season of, of being in the spring. Or maybe in my spring, I can help somebody that's in the winter of their life. And so there's the, you know, especially our, our, our world today sets up so many boundaries um, that are, um, you know, telling us uh, that it's not going to work with, you know, just talking to other generations or things like that. Yes, sir. Absolutely. What Raymond was saying was he brought up James chapter 4 and talking about how quickly that life happens and you think you have so much time in the spring of your life and then one day you look up and then you're in the winter of life and then when, you're, when you hit that winter of life you're thinking about how you can't do the same things that you did when you were in the spring of life. And so, um, thank you for that comment. Uh, me and Raymond got to uh, hang out a lot this weekend and uh, a group of us were helping him fix his fence this weekend, and so got to hear lots of great words of wisdom from, from Raymond. So definitely enjoyed that, for sure. <laughs> yeah, after this weekend, I think I'm, I'm done with the spring life. I think I'm in the summer of my life. <clears throat> so it's just such a beautiful thing of how we can work together, regardless of, of the season of life. Um, in, in order to, to uh, encourage one another, to build one another up. 
So if you would uh, turn with me to Titus <laughs> chapter 2. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, we'll be starting in verse 1. We'll go 1 through 8. It says, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men, that, that's the first group we're talking about here. <laughs> Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled in faith, in love, in steadfastness. Older women, that's the second group. Likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good. And, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be revealed. Likewise, urge the younger men to be self-controlled. Show yourself in all respects to be a model of good works, and in your teaching show integrity, dignity, and sound, and sound speech that cannot be condemned." So that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. And so we see these, these four groups of people. We see the older men. We see the older women. The younger women and the younger men. And so it, it talks about, when it's, when it's talking about the old, older men, it talks about being sober-minded and dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, in steadfastness. Talking about older women, talking about being reverent in behavior. Do not slander, not slaves to much wine. Goes into being uh, sober-minded. And to teach what is good. Younger women to love husbands and children. To be self-controlled, to be pure. Working at home and kind and submissive. And younger men to be self-controlled. And it goes on to say, um, having integrity and dignity and sound speech. And to be blameless. Now if you look back in verse 1, it says, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. And so each, each of these groups of individuals that it's, it's talking about, we all have that responsibility to teach with sound doctrine, to, to discover truth, to seek truth. And in, and in order to do that, we have to help each other. I think that's why it's so important to be able to have conversations with one another. If, if someone is saying anything that, you know, maybe by just mistake, you know, I don't think there's anybody in this room especially that's going to go out and, and teach something that they believe is a lie. And so when, when something is wrong, and there, there very could, well could be something that I say this morning that comes out wrong, that I either misread or that I said by mistake, or maybe I just misspoke. And so I, I want that to happen if, not I don't want that to happen, but I want, if, if that does happen, I want someone to be able to come up to me and tell me, hey, I think you missed the mark on this. Let's look at this more. And I think that's so important to be able to have those conversations and those seasons of life. Maybe I'm, I'm going through the same process as someone that, that, the, that they're in the winter of life went through, you know, 30 years ago. And they're saying, hey, I went through the same exact thing, or I thought the same exact thing. Let me show you why I think you're wrong. And I, I think that's what's so beautiful about being able to have conversations is that we can build one another up. Now, those conversations obviously have to be done in love and in a mutual respect and, and a desire for truth and to glorify God. And so, looking at verse 8 in that same chapter, verse 8, it says, And sound speech that cannot be condemned, so that an opponent may be put to shame, having nothing evil to say about us. And as I was reading this, this passage last night, I, I'd never really thought about it, but the word us Stuck, stuck out to me there at the end of verse 8. And so I, I began thinking about who is this us that is being referenced? And so if you look back in Titus chapter 1, and I know this is a very simple thing right here, but I, I think it's important to look at. So if you look at 
Titus chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, a servant of God and an ap- apostle of Jesus Christ for the sake of faith in God's elect and their knowledge of the truth which accords with godliness. So obviously we know that Paul is writing this letter, but who is he writing it to? If you look down in verse 4, it, it tells us, to Titus. And so when, he, when he's talking about us, what is that connection between Paul and Titus here? If you look at verse 4, to Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. And so I, I think that, you know, this, this is a very small thing, but it's, it's such, a, such an amazing thing. The word us. We as Christians are also part of that common faith. To, and each one, each one of us is a part of that. And I never really thought about the use of that word us, but, but to me it makes it that much more special. It makes it hit on a more personal level. There, there, there's a personal responsibility that we have to, to help our brethren. And we have to understand that our Christian walk is not alone. It's, that's not how God intended it to be. And we're so blessed that He created His church. And he created his church for a purpose. And he knew exactly what he was doing when he created this church. And, and here we're so blessed, at, here at our local congregation of Milwaukee Avenue, that, that there are so many people that we can go to. You know, some of these people are in the same season as, of life as we are, and some are in a completely different one. And I, I have so many people here at this congregation that I know I can go to with anything that I have. And it's such a, a peaceful reminder to, to remember that. And I know I can go to them and, and not just get, get a listening ear, which is, which is wonderful, but to get solid Bible-based advice and to learn lessons, especially from those who are older than I am. <clears throat> you know, I, I've, I've found out that going to someone who, who's not a Christian, who's not in that same mind, it's, it's just not, it's not the same as going to, to one of your Christian's brothers or, or sisters. Can, can they offer good advice? Sure. But having a conversation that's based in truth, that's found only in Scripture, is so important as we grow in our faith. And these connections don't just happen overnight. It, it takes time and it takes effort on, on everyone's part. It, it, it takes getting up early on Saturdays, whenever we're having the men's breakfast, to to go join your brothers and, and eat a meal and to have Bible study when you can. And I understand that there's going to be things that we just aren't able to make. But we, it, we have to ask ourselves, are we making a true effort to make those kind of things? It's, it's cutting your Sunday afternoon nap a little bit short because you have a care group meeting to go to. And, and show, building those bonds with the people in your care group so that you can work together to care for people. There's, there's so many opportunities to serve and to love one another. You know, when I, when I was in college, um, I was working at the dorms as a, a RA for a little while. And so a lot of my job was to be kind of a, a mentor for freshman guys and to kind of help them um, figure out themselves, I guess, during college and, and things like that. And so one of my big things um, that I tried to stress to them was was finding a church home. And I, I had a lot of guys that, that I knew were sleeping in on, on Sunday mornings that I knew weren't going to church. And there were also a lot of guys that I knew that were going to church, but they were just kind of going and checking off a box so they could tell their mom and dad that they woke up and went to church and then calling it good and then just going back home and, and not getting involved. And so I, I heard all kinds of excuses, and not just from the freshman guys. And it, it, was, it was all over the place. And I, I can't say that I've never been in that position in my life either. Because I, I definitely have at, at points in my life. You know, one time, um, this was back in November, and I was, I was in the library at school. Um, I was getting ready to teach Bible class. And so this guy came up to me in the library and um, kind of a guy that I'd seen around and we talked a few times. We weren't super close friends or anything. But he, he sat down next to me and just, we were talking about what we were working on and stuff. 
And I told him I was, you know, preparing to teach Bible class. And he goes, well, I thought you worked at a bank. I didn't know you were a preacher. And it, I did, it just kind of, I, w- I wasn't sure what he meant. And so he was telling me he thought that the preachers were the one who taught Bible class. And this is a guy who grew up in, in church and going to church. And not, not to say anything um, about any, anybody's view or anything like that. But it's so important that we understand that serving in the church and building roots in, the, in our congregation is so important to being productive and building those connections and building those bonds. And we don't serve for any personal glorification. We don't, we don't do that to, to get people to look at us or tell us good job. We do it so that we can serve the Lord and honor Him. And it's because... It's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We, we should want to be able to serve our God. Some people have a, a really um, disformed view on what the church is and what the church should be. And the best way to show them that is to lead by example and to get involved in our congregation. Everything that we do, even our work in the church, has to be focused on on pleasing God. And if we love God like we're supposed to and like we want to, then we're going to love His people and we're going to show that. Now, so we've kind of covered talking about why the seasons of life are important. And so I want to move more specifically talking about the summer of life. And so just a little bit of of background. Um, I'm going to turn 25 in a couple months. And so by our little guidelines here, Um, I'm not quite in the summer of life, and I don't feel like I'm in the summer of life yet. But I want to ask this question. To those of you who maybe either are in the summer of life right now, or have already completed this season of life and are, are a little bit older, what is something that you've learned or are currently learning in the summer of life? And this can be as, as broad or as specific, um, as you want it to be. What, what are your thoughts? What is something that you've learned in the summer of life? Absolutely. So there's, what she's saying is there's a lot of responsibility and responsibility that, you know, where other people are depending on you, especially your children. And so definitely lots of um, selflessness required for that, I'm assuming so. What else? What are other lessons that you've learned um, in the season of life or are currently learning? He's saying that um, being able to learn God's mercy um, and how th- we may have learned stuff in the spring of life that we don't realize until we get to the next uh, next season of life. Yes, ma'am. I 
talking about how um, in this season of life, you don't know all the answers and how important it is to build relationships with people, especially that are older, that can help you through that. Yes, ma'am. Well, not everyone's like me. to learn. But I didn't learn so much. There's nothing like where you come and sit that teaches that life is not all about you. And suddenly, life is about somebody else. And to me, that really, the summer of life was my first summer of life bringing the understanding that life is not about you especially when you bring a child home for the first time and everybody's attention goes to them including your own talking about the importance of prioritizing and realizing um, what is important and making that the most important. So moving forward, um, I want to ask the question um, to, to some of those um, who maybe are in kind of the same stage of life as me that are not quite in that summer of life. What is, what is something that you're, you're focused on as, as you're planning for that? Maybe, maybe a concern that you have or, or just something in general that you're preparing for. Looking over here. Or, Carl. I always thought the summer of life had been going through it. Time of maximum tension. Time where you're so physically at that Learn, learn so much, apply, hurt in the even out attention. The also time that you start gathering up for further down line. All of life start having to what you start done. Body. No, you might not that that's fine concept summer. Right. So, from someone who would you consider yourself to be the spring of life? So, from someone who is considering still the spring of life, um, talking about um, having maximum potential and um, the importance of, of realizing that we can't just live in this moment and not think ahead, that we have to plan and um, have an understanding that uh, planning um, is very important in moving to that next stage of life. talking about um, with max potential of moving into the summer of life, there also comes max unknowns. And we've we definitely all experienced max unknown this last year um, when we had no idea how, how things were going to happen or, or go. And we were all kind of um, shut in our own houses and um, definitely a learning experience for everyone, for sure. It's important to remember for, for those of us who are maybe not in the summer of life yet, but are, are getting closer, um, that the, the decisions we make right now have an impact on our future, um, whether that's good or whether that, that's bad. And I'm not saying that you can't um, recover from mistakes or re recover from things that you've done, done wrong, 
But, uh, but in, in some form or fashion, the, the decisions that we make right now have an impact on our future. So I want to um, very quickly um, just kind of give a quick overview on the topics and things that we'll be looking uh, in our next few classes here. This, this one was just kind of an overview to kind of set the tone and get everyone thinking on the same page. So um, we're going to be talking about um, pride and how in the summer of life it's easy to, to look at yourself and think of all the knowledge that you've gained, all the, all the, um, the great things that you've done, um, maybe if you're building a career, um, things like that, how it's easy to look at your own um, abilities and, and to have a self, um, to uh, be prideful of the things that you've done uh, by yourself instead of looking at God and understanding that everything that we have is from Him and for Him. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about um, being busy and overcommitted as uh, multiple people have um, talked about the busyness of the summer of life this morning. Uh, we'll be talking about um, having a young family and guiding them and nurturing them and, and pointing them to the Lord. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, that feeling stretched and the difference of, of just uh, wanting some me time so we, that we can recharge and be able to, to fill other people's cups um, versus um, being lazy. We're going to be talking about um, how the blazing heat of summer can drag on forever. Um, but in later seasons, we'll look back uh, and realize that it actually flew by. And oftentimes we can wish that uh, we had those days back. That's why it's important that we redeem our time um, in all stages of life. Um, we're going to be talking about um, how were the former days, were they actually better? Talking about anxiety um, and, and another recap of, of the summer of life. And so, each, each stage of life is really important. And especially in the summer of life, there's, there can be lots of differences. Um, it, it can be easy to, to, to compare yourself to others who are in other stages of life. Or others that are in that same stage of life that you are, especially moving into summer. Each, each of these different stages, um, you know, it, it can be discouraging to compare yourself to others, especially when you're looking at um, if, you know, people who are getting married or buying a house or beginning a career job. Maybe you're stuck in a job that you really don't like and you don't want to do for the rest of your life. Or people are having children or um, being put in leadership positions that you're striving for as well. Or maybe you're looking at people who you think maybe are smarter than you. And it's so easy to get caught up in these things that, that we may want for ourselves too. And this, this is a, a very big thing that Satan uses uh, to make us lose our focus. Um, and it's so important for us to remember that no matter what our situation is, what, what our season of life is, what that season of life looks like for us, we can let our light shine as Christians. And so we've got probably about a minute and a half left or so. Um, are there any uh, additional comments or questions before we close out for this morning? All right, well, I'm really... Yes? Absolutely. Uh, Josh was talking about how um, the, the seasons of life, we can even experience different seasons in a day. Um, and um, talking about that passage back in Ecclesiastes that we read earlier, um, talking about how remembering that through all of the changes of life, the one thing that we have that is constant and that will never change is God. And how um, thinking about that and remaining focused on that will help us through those stages. 
there any other comments this morning? Well, thank you for your attention. I'm excited to be able to um, help teach this class. And uh, thank you for all the comments and uh, participation this morning.